We are now inside at Sandra Cohn Photography, and I want to show you how I meet her when shooting color film with window light. Um, spoiler, it's exactly the same as how I meet her with outdoor natural light. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my ISO on my meter, box speed, whatever film I'm shooting. Right now it's the Fuji 400H, so my ISO is at 400. And I have Ernie sitting here in front of this beautiful, big, south-facing window. And we have light coming in here, so we have a highlight and we have a shadow. Um, which is different than what we were seeing with the outdoor light, right? We were in open shade, it was all pretty even. Window light, you always have this difference with a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of a shadow. Um, so I'm going to take my uh, meter bulb out and again, I'm gonna go right in the shadow. And I want you to notice how my bulb is facing into the shadow. Again, it's not like this, because if I did this, I'm going to have more of a mid-tone reading because I'm going to get some of this highlight that's going to come over here. I want a true shadow reading because I want to make sure that the darkest part of my image is perfectly exposed. Now, window light, shooting color film. Because we are metering for our shadows, sometimes shooting color film with window light can be tricky. Um, this is a beautiful day. Today we have a lot of nice light and we have a south facing window, which means that in the afternoon more so, but south, south light's pretty full. It, it gets pretty bright. It'll change throughout your day, but a characteristic of south light is that it'll really come in and fill up a room, whereas north light just kind of hovers and is kind of stays the same all the time. So even with all those things going on, we're still getting a reading in the shadow of a 60th of a second at f2, uh, which, because Ernie is a grown-up, is going to be just fine, but if I were shooting a toddler, working with a toddler or something, that would be a little tricky. But we're going to make it work, right? You're not going to jump around, right? Um, so I'm actually going to bring in a reflector and just bounce a little bit of that light back. Now I'm still getting that, still getting it, so we're just going to shoot at a 60th. That's fine, we can do it. But isn't this pretty? It's just so pretty, I love window light. All right, here we go. This is, this is it, this is total, my favorite kind of light ever. Bring your chin down just a little bit, good. Pretty. And look out the window for me. And again right here. All right, that looks great. So now I wanna show you metering black and white with window light, um, which is, by the way is like my favorite thing to do. So I'm excited to be back in studio in my element. Um, so with black and white, again, um, you really wanna meter for where you want your detail to be. That's kind of the fun of black and white. It's kind of the art of it. And you can really control the look of your image that way. You can make it more contrast. You can make it more brighter, depending on how you're metering and where. So here we're sitting. We have this beautiful window. We have nice highlights here. And we have some nice shadows here. It's still pretty even light because we are surrounded by these huge walls. We have like a two-stop difference between highlights and shadows. Um, but we can have some fun with it. So if I were metering um, for my highlights, I just want to show you what all these different things look like. So your highlights are where the light is hitting your subject's face, if you're taking a portrait. Um, and you're going to be bulb facing the light. And we are at 125, 2.8. If I were going to do a mid-tone reading, I'd want to get a reading that kind of had a little bit of shadow and a little bit of the highlight. So I'd be here under the chin, bulb out facing me. And now I'm at a 60th, so that's a stop difference. And if I wanted a shadow reading, I would be here away from the light, so bulb is facing into the shadow to get a shadow reading. I'm going to take one of each of those and we'll see, and now we're at a 30th. So yeah, two stop difference. Um, I'm going to take a photo of each of those the light is pretty even, but we'll be able to see just a little difference between metered for the highlights, metered for the mid-tones, and metered for the shadows, which will be fun. So let's do this. So let's do a highlight reading. Again, that's 
2.8 at 125th. Good. That's good, kind of. Yeah. Good. Bring your chin down. Good. Good. I'm going to take a mid tone reading. Now we're going to be at a 60th. Oh, good. You're so good. You moved your own head before I asked you to do it. Good. And then this is going to be a 30th again. Yep. So I'm going to hold my breath and hold really still. Let's see how steady my hands can be. Good. Um, what's fun with black and white too is you can kind of play around with it. So if this light were a little brighter, we'd have more of a silhouette if I came here. But we can still be here. Actually, can you scoot your chair this way just a little mm -hmm. bit? Let's just do it. So I'm going to have you look at this wall. And I'm actually going to meet her for the highlights here. So his face is going to be a little bit more in shadow, which will be fun. And then turn your head towards me and look at your elbow. So we're going to get a little bit of that highlight there, which is nice. And here. So most of the time, friends, when I'm metering my black and white as a rule, I tend to meter for, take a mid-tone or a shadow reading, and then I ask the lab to scan for the highlights. We're going to talk about that more when we get into labs, um, but I was just thinking that because, again, I'm wanting to create a nice, dense negative. I like brighter images. That's more of like my style and my brand. So I'm going to do just a couple more with those shadow readings now that he's in a little bit more light. So here, we'll do that. Just a couple more. Gonna get really close. Good. Does it good? Right. <laughs>